I want to start with a short background on Kubernetes, just giving you a brief introduction for those that are not that familiar with the terms, so you know what I'm talking about. So Kubernetes is a cloud orchestration framework. A Kubernetes cluster consists of a central piece called the control plane. It has all the logic that is necessary for orchestrating um, code and data in the cloud. And then it's joined by a bunch of nodes. Essentially, you're computing resources that have uh, a small um, agent called the kubelet that takes care of communicating with the control plane, communicating with the other nodes. And if you, as a user, want to deploy workloads to the cloud using Kubernetes, you talk to the control plane, you define a deployment, and then Kubernetes takes care of scheduling this to one of those computing nodes. So an application in Kubernetes is typically called a pod. That's the smallest uh, unit that Kubernetes is handling. And a pod essentially consists of one or multiple containers and some definitions on um, what resources they need, uh, what configurations they have. And your application can be split into one or multiple pods, again, each of them containing uh, one or multiple containers. And then resources as, for example, storage, that in Kubernetes is called volumes. So you build and define your application, um, and then you tell Kubernetes to deploy it uh, as pods. And as I said, they are scheduled on the so-called nodes. A node is essentially, in most cases, a virtual machine containing the small agent piece called the kubelet and a container runtime. So you, uh, so the the pod can, can can run the containers. And if we go into a higher overview, I, as I said, we have this node in the middle that consists of the your workloads, the pods. We have the control plane that has all the logic for orchestrating, uh, scheduling, um, and and keeping the state of your application. And on the right hand side, we have a bunch of cloud services that your cloud provider of choice is offering you uh, as additional resources that can, you, Kubernetes can use. For example, networking, load balancing, cloud storage. As a user, I have an interface called the API server. I connect most cases using the Kubernetes CLI tool called kubectl. I connect to this API server, and then from there on, I deploy my workloads. And because this is a public service, most of this stuff I don't even have access to. Like the control plane, if I'm using a managed Kubernetes, it's completely managed and controlled by the cloud provider, similar to the cloud services. And in a public space, we all know there are a lot of insecurities, there are threats, um, there's a lot of things I have to trust. So the question I like to address here is how can we leverage confidential computing to protect all parts of the system to make it a fully confidential Kubernetes? And I see two use cases here. The first one is isolating existing deployments, um, basically uh, securing uh, existing applications in the cloud, making them, uh, running them in a private space. And the second one is deploying new applications that have built-in privacy that are designed for running in confidential computing, that leverage confidential computing to create new types of use cases that were not possible uh, so far. So let's take a look at how we can protect the workloads and the data in, in Kubernetes. And the first concept I'd like to show you is called the Enclave concept. Most of you might be familiar with this. Um, the most common example is Intel SGX. The idea is essentially that you repackage your applications into process-based enclaves, you containerize them, and you can then deploy them as part of your pods. And this is very simple in Kubernetes. All you have to do is use a device driver to enable Kubernetes to use those SGX capabilities. And this isolates your individual workloads. Very small TCB. You only have to trust your own code, essentially, and of course, SGX or any other uh, process-based enclave. But this is not really lift and shift. You have to repackage, rebuild your application, maybe change even code. So 
a very um, similar approach in terms of protection, but very different uh, technology in use is the confidential container concept. And in that case, instead of using process-based enclaves, we use confidential virtual machines. And instead of using a, um, a container runtime to run the containers in a pod, you run a new confidential VM for every pod in your Kubernetes cluster. So you could have uh, nested virtualization or bare metal machines for your nodes. And from that point on, you boot up um, a new confidential VM for each pod and run your containers inside there. And I'm not going to go into more detail here because the next upcoming talks are going to be exactly about this concept about confidential containers. But both of these concepts share is they are focusing on individual workload protection. So what we have now is on our Kubernetes cluster in our nodes, we have completely isolated pods and uh, uh, protected data at runtime. So the question remains is how can we mesh them together? How can we connect those individual workloads? How can we use, um, orchestrate them? As you see on the left side, the control plane, there is still no trusted party. So how can we orchestrate those workloads? And how can we uh, use the cloud services that are already in place? So the next step is about orchestration. And one concept I call the Marbron concept. Marbron is an open source project of ours that, that aims at solving this exact challenge. So the idea is that we lift the individual workload protection to entire confidential deployments. And the question how Marbron does this is by installing a trusted party into the Kubernetes control plane that runs itself inside a secure enclave. The user can connect to that, can verify it, can provide it with a configuration, and then this trusted party can take care of those specific orchestration tasks that arise with confidential work nodes. So it can attest each of them, verify their integrity, um, use remote attestation, and then provide them with trusted configuration parameters because they come from our trusted components uh, and build up secure channels between them. And as a plus, Marron is also able to provide secure channels for specifically supported cloud services. For example, another open source project of ours, the Edgeless database, uh, Marbron can automatically connect your workloads or provide um, connection security for, for connecting to the Edgeless database. And this is great. It has some downsides because as you see, it has a lot of uh, limitations. You need to specifically install the smart run control plane piece. You need to uh, adjust the deployments of your confidential parts to be able to communicate with Marbaran. Uh, we only support specific cloud services. But in cases where, in, in the use case B, where we have new types of applications, this keeps the TCP relatively low and still provides you with most of the features you would expect in a cloud native environment like scaling, orchestration, um, uh, database storage, this kind of stuff. And if you want to see an example on this, we took the Open Service Mesh bookstore demo application and we confidentialized them with the components I've just shown you. And you can find this on our blog. But we wanted to go the next step and bring true uh, lift and shift for the use case A for bringing all workloads into confidential environments without any changes for a, a true confidential Kubernetes. And we call this Constellation. And the building block for Constellation is confidential Kubernetes nodes. So in, instead of protecting individual workloads, we put entire, confi uh, entire Kubernetes nodes inside confidential VMs. So any workload that runs inside these confidential VMs automatically is runtime encrypted and protected by this VM. And if you would stop there, you would get what's already available on, on some of the public clouds, which is essentially a managed Kubernetes with confidential VMs. So the control plane, still not trusted, still operated by the cloud provider, same with cloud, most cloud services, but we have memory protection for our individual nodes. So then what we imagine and what our vision was is that we don't stop there and we expand this concept to your entire Kubernetes cluster. 
So now also the control plane is trusted, our cloud services are trusted, and you can use, uh, you have a completely isolated Kubernetes cluster from the outside, which you can use as any other Kubernetes cluster from the inside. And how this works is you would create your Kubernetes resources, your nodes, your control plane, like you would do in any other Kubernetes cluster in the cloud. You provide a simple uh, CLI for that. So you can just say, okay, create. It will spin up a bunch of confidential VMs running a um, Linux image that is prepared for running con uh, containerized workloads that is supporting verifiable boot and has a very minimal image there. And in the next step, we would initialize the cluster, which consists of another command called init. And then we have a component in the control plane that connects to all our nodes, verifies them, verifies the integrity using remote attestation, and then boot, uh, bootstraps them together in one confidential overlay network, a confidential VPN. And from that point on, we have completely a connected cluster of confidential VMs that are all uh, verified. And the user can verify this using our coordinator piece, obtaining an attestation statement uh, that shows of all those uh, nodes that I've just uh, bootstrapped. And from that point of view, uh, point of in time, the user can then connect to this cluster, use the cluster using uh, the normal board, uh, the normal tools that come with Kubernetes, and interact with any like any any other Kubernetes cluster because this is a fully functional Kubernetes cluster. And it doesn't stop there, if you want, if you have all those features that you would need in a production-grade Kubernetes cluster, like auto-scaling. If you deploy workloads that need more computing resources that are already available, Constellation will automatically connect to your cloud provider API, request new a new uh, computing node running a, a, our confidential VM image, would also verify that, bootstrap that, and add that to the cluster, and you have functional auto-scaling. So again, comparing this step where we started with a confidential uh, Kubernetes node, Constellation goes ahead and provides you with full cluster attestation. You also have confidential networking, confidential storage. You can use cloud services like key management, uh, load balancing, and this, and it's done in a uh, cloud agnostic manner. So you can run on all of the hyperscaler and use your usual multi-cloud deployment. So we can finally say uh, you can really turn the public cloud into your private cloud. That's it from me. Uh, for more information on Constellation, visit our booth or go to our website at edgeless.systems. Thank you very much.